want to welcome all of His Glory Nation from east to west and north to south, all over the world, as His glory is in every nation under the sun. Praise the Most High. Today we're going to bring you our daily proverb of the day. Today is uh, June 28th, 2017, the year of Jubilee here in Jerusalem and the year of the sword for the Lord. So watch carefully, Jerusalem. Matter of fact, we'll do a uh, Bible prophecy update later this week as we see that there's a lot going on uh, in the nation of Israel around the uh, Jubilee year, which always happens. God always acts on his Jubilee year. Hamas uh, struck uh, Israel yesterday. Israel had fighter jets uh, strike Hamas again. Again, that's the area of the Psalm 83 war. You have Hezbollah up to Old Tyre and Sidon, which is being funded by uh, Iran, who's trying to create the new Persian Empire. Uh, they are uh, lots of skirmishes going up on that border, and it's not if, it'll be when the IDF, uh, Israeli Defense Forces, and Hezbollah come to blows. Also, Syria has been shooting rockets into the Golan Heights, and Israel has struck uh, at least two times. So that it's heating up on all areas of Israel in the year of the Jubilee. So let's watch it very carefully. There's so much going on in American politics. So if you're in the United States, uh, you may not be seeing this. Uh, but most of our followers are from other places throughout the world. So watch the, the nation of Israel because that is God's beloved uh, nation. And that is his city of truth, Jerusalem. So keep our eye on it. Today's uh, daily proverb is going to come from Proverbs 3. And we're going to close out Proverbs 3 in this session, 34 and 35. And it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's a really a good thing to meditate on because many people always come to me and, and many ask the question, why do the evil continue to get away with it? We've taught in our Psalm 2 class that he who's in, in the heavens sits and laughs as the nations rage in vain, thinking that they're getting away with it. Donald, uh, Dr. Donald Barnsdale said in one of his commentaries, uh, we have choices in life. The two choices are to grab the crown of the kingdom glory and be in his glory forever through love or face the judgment of the coming king. That's our choice. And that's what it, uh, the proverb is, is referring to in 34 and 35. God's judgment will come upon the earth. As Solomon said, though earth is just a fading flower, it's here today and gone tomorrow. You see how quick life moves. Yes, we wonder why the evil hasn't been judged, but it will be judged, and it will be judged with the righteous scales of justice. And the Lord will, will uh, reward those who love him with an everlasting life and also on the bema seat based on what did you do with the, t the talent the Lord gave you after salvation. So it's a two, two tests. First test, do we accept Jesus Christ as Lord of our life repent of our sins and have glory with him forever, our King of Kings and Lord of hosts? Or do we go to judgment away from him? And that eternity means forever. It's, <laughs> this is why we're here. It's boot camp for the, for the next life, the eternal life. And then also on the Bema seat as a Christian, as accepting Christ, what did you do with the gift that God gave you? Are you going to use it for his kingdom glory? Are you going to do it for love? Are you going to do it for the fruit of the spirit? And that's where we will judge potentially having the five crowns to have the most high say, come in, well done, my faithful servant. You've done well, as Jesus talked about in the talents that were given to the people. Uh, verse 34, surely he, he scorns the scornful. He will scorn them in his time and his purpose. He has a time and a purpose for everything. Sometimes he allows the evil to open up areas of blessing. We see this in the Middle East. We, we, we pray for the, the persecution of the church in Egypt and Syria and all over Iraq. It's, it's horrendous. Uh, the persecution in Iran, the persecution in China, the persecution in India, the persecution in Pakistan with the bombings. These are horrible, horrific, but we know one thing for sure. If they have Jesus Christ as their Savior, they're at home in glory. They're home to their, the high land. But what this is doing out of all this evil is spreading the gospel even more. The more they persecute, the more the church grows. It's like the early church in Iran. They can't stop it. It's on wildfire. It's going from home to home. And God is using this evil for his purpose and for his glory. God's not authorizing this evil. This evil has free will. But he, he will have judge over those who hand the he, evil. He's taking the good. He's making good out of this. And there is plenty of good because thousands and thousands are coming to Jesus Christ. 
And many of them are coming to His Glory Nation, His Glory Ministry from these particular areas. 85% of the followers of His Glory Ministry are from Muslim, na Muslim nations. They want to see the, who the true King is. Who is this Jesus? We want Him to be a part of our life. They've had ma ma massive amounts of uh, visions and dreams. The supernatural is really happening to them. Jesus is exposing himself to, to them, and they're coming in droves. Praise his name. Verse, uh, finishing off 34, but gives grace to the humble. God, through Jesus Christ, is grace. Nothing we do can earn that. It's the grace of love, accepting him as Lord of our life and asking for repentance and following him where we have grace. And he wants our humble self. We, it's not about us. There's nothing we can do to earn that, but giving him our heart and there will be grace to the humble. And that grace is eternal. That grace is full with peace, joy, love, hope for eternity. Our tears will be washed away. There'll be no more pain. There'll no more suffering. No more death. No more disease. No more hardship. No more trials and tribulations to see where your next meal is going to come from. Supporting your family. All the things that we have to go through in life will be gone because he will take us to kingdom glory as long as we finish the race and accept him as Lord of our life and then use that gift for his purpose and his glory. And we close out in 35. The wise shall inherit glory. The wise meaning the only wisdom, as Solomon said in Ecclesiastes, is not the wisdom of what the world teaches you. It's not the fame. It's not the money. It's not the women. It's not what the world thinks. It's not the Queen of Sheba comes and says you're the most wise man in the world. Not what women, not what men say. It's only wisdom that comes through the Holy Spirit is the only truth. And that truth is, a, is our Savior, Jesus Christ. And that truth and that wise that, that, that wisdom will come, shall inherit glory. That's his promise to us, that the spiritual wisdom we shall inherit glory, meaning being in his kavod. The kavod is the Hebrew word for his literal essence, his glory. We will be in his essence for eternity. As we accept him as Lord of our life through Jesus Christ, the Father, the Son, and, and, and the Holy Spirit are in us. The kavod is around us, in us, and shielding us, and will make our yoke light. But shame shall be the legacy of the fool. Shame will come on those who denied him because of whatever reason, because of pride, because of the world, because of deceit. Remember, Satan doesn't care. Satan is the great deceiver, the great distractor, great delayer. He doesn't care how his method comes across, what God you pick, or what delays you or distracts you, as long as you do not pick Jesus Christ. That's the only door that scares him. And it's the only door that will chase Satan away to his eternal home, which will be the lake of fire after the white throne judgment. And it's the only thing that makes demons screech is the name of Jesus Christ, because they fear the most holy one, the truth. And that truth is our Lord of hosts, our King of kings and Lord of hosts. But shame shall be the legacy of fools, that there will be judgment coming upon the earth once and for all, that our King of kings and Lord of hosts comes back the second time. As the kinsman redeemer, meaning redeeming the land and the goel in the Hebrew, blood redeemer. He redeemed the blood on Calvary, and he's also going to redeem the blood of the saints and create justice when he comes. Justice that will have the right scales at the end of the book of Revelation. And that is a wonderful thing to look forward to, to each and every one that loved the Most High God through His Son, Jesus Christ. We have eternal home that is of glory, that is of Him, that is of joy, peace, peace hope, love, no more tears, no more pain, no more suffering, but we're in his kingdom glory as brothers and sisters all over the world, all over his glory nation. No matter what tribe, tongue you're from, we all become brothers and sisters of the most high God through the beloved son, Jesus Christ. We pray that this Proverbs 3 and 34 and 35 has been a blessing to you. And may the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob bless you till next time. God bless you.